Uh, this is one of the multiple water systems that were heavily contaminated in the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. Um, much of the terrestrial land contamination landed in these forests behind me. A lot of that was intercepted by the trees and is held there for long-term discharge. These water systems, particularly with spring melt, uh, as well as with the typhoons in the fall, are bringing down large amounts of contaminated sediment that then is discharged into the estuaries and into the marine environment. This is also heavily contaminating the lakes uh, as well as these water systems here and have the potential to recontaminate areas that have been decontaminated, um, which this presents a long-term threat uh, to the people that are living uh, near these water systems that are uh, farming and that are living with homes embedded into these forests. Unfortunately, the Japanese government has been trying very hard uh, to normalize nuclear disasters. So in that regard, what they're telling people is that it is safe to move back uh, to these environments because they are decontaminating them. But in the areas where they're focused on farm fields, on rice paddies, and on forests, uh, it is really impossible to decontaminate the forests. And these are a perennial source of downstream contamination. Uh, a lot of the radiation is held in the living vegetation. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of it is also held in the fine sediment. Greenpeace is on the ground here doing another investigation of the radioactive contamination uh, in Fukushima Prefecture. And we are also currently off the coast uh, of Fukushima with our flagship, the Rainbow Warrior, doing marine sediment surveys, uh, really bringing to light the ongoing contamination, the ongoing nuclear crisis uh, that is happening not only in Fukushima Prefecture, but in other areas that have been impacted by this nuclear disaster.